Welcome to the video. In this video, we'll be taking a look at this little bit of technology here. This is the Neo board from Seriously Pro. Now, this is an F3 based flight controller. It has a power distribution board as part of it, and it has a daughter board that clips on the top that it has the video transmitter and also the on screen display as well. So, in theory, all you have to do is connect your receiver, connect your camera, plug in your antenna for your video transmitter, and connect your ESCs and you've done all the wiring, so it should make for a very simple, easy installation. However, quite a few people have been in touch, and particularly at events, people have come up to me and asked me to do this video. So for all of you that collared me at an event like the Drone Show or one of the others that we've been to over the past couple of months and came up and asked me to do this video, this one is for you. So in this video, it's not going to be a complete build video. We're going to go through things relatively quickly because the setup of the board itself is very similar to the ones that we've already done in things like the quadcopter building for beginners series. So if you're interested in how you set up CleanFly or Betafly or how you do the standard wiring or things to consider when you're building a quadcopter, this video is not going to be for you. This video is for those pilots who have one of these who are struggling a little bit or they've just got one and they're about to start warming the soldering iron up and trying to figure out where everything plugs in. The manuals for these boards I find a little bit tricky to follow compared with things like the manuals from Flyduino for the KISS controllers or from things like Brain FPV for the RE1 it doesn't show how normal connections are made. So things like you know if, if you had an S-Bus receiver this is where you wire it up, if you have a PPA this is where you wired up this is how you connect to ESCs those kind of diagrams are not in here and for me personally as quite a visual learner I find that that kind of diagrammatic or images is a very easy way to convey to me exactly where everything's going to be connected so in this video we're going to spend a quick little bit of time for those of you that haven't wired this little guy up yet talking about where you connect the receiver where you connect the pins to connect the top and bottom boards together where you connect up the ESCs where you plug in the camera and all the other bits of soldering that you need to do on here because the manual itself again talks about lots of different variations of how you can put this thing together with and without the daughter board and there's lots of things about solder pads that you can or can't bridge. And if you're using the Neo with the daughter board, it's actually really straightforward. There's only one little bit of soldering that you need to do to select the voltage you want for the camera that you're going to connect to it. So let's quickly talk about the frame. Now, the frame that we're looking at here is the Revo 5 from Fossil Stuff. We did have a quick look at this a couple of weeks ago, and as I'm going to do this build, and I'd quite like the flight controller to be up out of the way so I can show you how all the soldering is going to go together, this is going to work particularly well. If I was building this on my own, I probably wouldn't use the Neo with something like this frame. The frame itself comes with some 3D printed shrouds that allow you to drop it over the top of the flight controller and other bits and pieces on the top of the model to protect it. Because the Neo flight controller itself is a little bit wider than a normal flight controller and that's because the power distribution elements kind of go around the outside. It means I can't use one of those 3D printable shrouds but it's still going to work fine for the build. Now we have all the cables coming up through the middle section here so all we've got to do is start putting this thing together. So first of all let's talk about the soldering that we need to do on this guy. The first and most important thing I'll probably shout out to here is that recently there was an update to the manual for the VTX OSD daughter board talking about the fact that if you had revision D or an earlier board, i.e. ABC, then there were a couple of problems and by installing a 10K resistor, we actually used a 15K resistor because all it is is just a pull up resistor for one of the signal pins, you have to pop a little resistor on here, there's also another place that you could put a little surface mount resistor as well just happened that we only have these kind of traditional resistors in our spares bin we popped it on here and ours is working fine so before you do anything else uh, i would definitely get yourself one a little 10k resistor if you have a revision d board or earlier bit of heat shrink and pop it on isn't ideal that you have to kind of do this kind of modding but i suspect that this is exactly the problem that a lot of the pilots that came up to me at those events to talk about the problems getting the vtx and the vtx button to work this is probably what it was all about 
So first of all, that's where I start with the soldering. You are going to have to have a decent soldering iron and you are going to have to have a reasonably fine tip and steady hands, but it's absolutely doable. Next thing you need to do, and this is the only other bit of um, soldering that you need to do in terms of voltage selection, just like I talked at the top of the video, all you need to do here is with this little selector, you can choose the selection between the voltage for the camera, whether it's 12 or five volts. We're actually gonna use a little fact chart camera on here, so we're just gonna select five volts. Again, this is why it's slightly confusing, because here on the other side, you can see the soldering pads for the voltage selection for the video transmitter but this is a video transmitter. But that's only if your video transmitter maybe dies or has a problem and you want to use a third party video transmitter that you want to plug in. Now we're not doing any of that, so we don't have to do any soldering at all. We don't even have to solder in the connection for the external video transmitter. All we need to do is just this one little bit of solder for the voltage for the camera and we're done. While you've got the soldering iron out and it's all warm, I would solder on the camera connector. This little kind of Pico blade style connector that's here uh, comes as part of the kit and isn't installed by default. So again, while you've got your fine tip soldering iron out, just pop that on. I'd do that and use the cable that comes as part of the kit to connect the camera rather than direct soldering. Just uh, if you want to change the camera or there's problems, then it's easier to unplug stuff than get the soldering iron out. I would also tin the ESC connections while you're doing this. Um, the connections are on the bottom board, which is the main flight controller itself. In each corner by the side of where the power connects from the ESCs, there's a signal and a ground pin. Worthwhile tinning those while we're at this point. The other thing that you need to do as well is if you have both of these boards, they don't come with the little riser pins installed. So you have to do a little bit of soldering, putting those in place as well. Now I'm not gonna show that because Dominic's already done a great little video where he goes through the process in quite a bit of detail. So I'll link in the description to his video, but uh, down in the right hand corner, this is kind of what it looks like. Once we've done those bits of soldering, we can start to physically put this thing together. So the first thing I'm going to do is wire up my receiver. We're using one of the little XSRs on this frame and we're gonna connect it using PPM. If you're using something like an XSR, then the connections can be made very, very quickly indeed. There should be two cables in the kit that both connect into the little white adapter to the right of where we did our little bit of soldering. And that adapter has a couple of cables. One is for connecting to any kind of receiver that's going to use PPM or SBUS. It's a standard kind of servo style lead. And the other one, it has the same kind of connector at each end, and that is specifically made to plug directly into your X. SR. Now we have used the XSR here obviously so we've actually ended up using that particular plug and if you wanted to use PPM for your XSR I'm not sure why you'd want to you modify the cable like this if you're going to use SBUS then keep the cable exactly as it is supplied plug one end into that white port under the flight controller the other end into your XSR that's all the wiring done for you just in one simple step then in clean flight when you get to that step Go into the port, configure UART 2 as the serial receiver and configure UART 5 as smart port telemetry, as you can see here. Go into the receiver tab and select SBUS and then you'll find that all the SBUS connection is working beautifully and you also have smart port telemetry coming back to your Taranis radio. Next thing to do then is uh, now we've got it all connected. Oh, and just a quick point here. I, because these risers are brass, or something like that, there's some metal, uh, they will be conductive to electricity. I have taken the precaution of popping a little nylon washer on the top just to make sure that we have no shorts. Now we've got that in place, we can wire up the ESC leads. So the power leads, I'm just cutting them to size. I'm leaving myself a good half an inch of slack on all of these leads in case I need to unscrew the board in future and lift it up for maybe routing or uh, rewiring or remaking off the ends. So I'm just soldering those into each corner. Uh, although it really strictly doesn't matter which ESC you're gonna connect to which corner, I am making sure that each of the ESCs are going to the right place. That means the un soldering if I need to replace an ESC is going to be easier. Now the way it works is with the board in the right orientation. So with the so with the model in front of you, with the front of it facing away, the 
power connections, the XT60 connections, should be on the left hand side. With it in that orientation, then all of the cables and connections for the ESCs are in the right orientation, they're all the right way around, so that in things like beta flight and clean flight, they're going to be set up automatically. So that's good. Once you've got the power soldered up, next thing to do is the signal and ground wires. Now we've already tinned these in the previous step, so the easy thing to do is just cut them to length. Again, I'm leaving about half an inch of spare and solder solder them into position and then you've done the majority of the soldering. Next thing to do is then plug in the VTX OSD daughter board, plug it onto the top of the flight controller itself because we've now finished with that bit. Once that's in place then you can put the screws through the whole thing and secure it to the frame. Now we're actually using little 3D custom designed spaces here just to help make sure that we don't compress the boards or put too much stress. And again, you probably wouldn't have to do this if you were mounting the board inside a more traditional frame, but because we're mounting it on the top, I want a nice enclosed space and I might actually make a 3D printable shroud that will actually fit over the larger Neo board to stop dirt and grit getting in there when we invariably crash this thing. Now we've got that done, we can plug the camera into the camera connection at the back of the on-screen display VTX, and that's pretty much everything done. The last thing we need to talk about then is the software. Now, the software, uh, first of all, I flashed it with Betaflight. I was using Betaflight version 3.1.6, and Betaflight worked great on it with the exception that at the moment Betaflight doesn't support the little button at the side of the VTX which you use to change the band, frequency and power that's available from the VTX. And unfortunately at the moment through Betaflight the on-screen display doesn't actually work with the VTX OSD as well, it doesn't support it. So although you can access and navigate the menu in Betaflight, you can't use it to change the frequency and band on the video transmitter. I'm hoping that Dominic will work with the Betaflight team and get that support in there sooner rather than later. It's a slightly different matter in Clean Flight. We flashed it with the very latest version of Clean Flight. I think it's something like version 1.14.2, something like that. It's the last one before uh, Clean Flight has become Clean Flight 2.0. And we have another video talking about that if you're interested about what the implications of that potentially will be for the community. But we've installed CleanFlight on the board and with CleanFlight it works a little bit better. So the button now works on the top. Now the way the button works is if you briefly press it, it changes the band. If you press it for a certain number of seconds, it changes the frequency. If you change it for another certain number of seconds, it will change the power. And then what you have to do is you have to then press it and hold it for more than 10 seconds and then it saves that information. So in Betaflight, when you powered everything up, it worked fine. So you had a video, I could see things in the goggles. I think by default, uh, it was coming on channel A1, but I found that by using the scan button in the goggles that I was using, and then I could see the on-screen display and the camera image beautifully. And then I could also access the menu in Betaflight and navigate around, it was great. In CleanFlight, I had a slightly different experience. When I first powered it on, it didn't, turn on and it didn't show me any images at all. In fact with FPV goggles you've probably realised that if there is no signal around at all you just get static. If there's some kind of signal then you usually get a black screen or a flickering black screen and we were getting just completely static and that's because by default in clean flight the video transmitter that I was using was defaulting to turned off. So what I had to do was press and hold the button on the side to turn it on, then use the button to select the band and frequency that I wanted, and I tend to fly majority of time on Fat Shark channel one. And once I had it all set up as I wanted, then press and hold that button on the side for more than 10 seconds, and it remembered that setting, and the next time it powered up, it just powered up and I could use everything. So hopefully that helps those of you that are interested in setting up the Seriously Pro Neo or you've been struggling with it. I think the big trick here is that if you haven't added that resistor to your video transmitter as per the latest edition of the manual, 
absolutely go back and do that. That will help you an awful lot. The second thing is, is that if you're using Betaflight, then at the moment Betaflight doesn't support either the little button at the side of the VTX that changes all the settings, and it also doesn't support the changing of those settings via the on-screen display as well. If you use CleanFlight, then it's a slightly different situation. CleanFlight does support the buttons, but let's keep our fingers crossed that in version 2.0 of CleanFlight, we get that on-screen display and we get that functionality. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. We try and release at least two videos a week, usually a quick tip on a Tuesday and a more in-depth video on a Friday. And sometimes we manage to get a few more out as well. If you're interested in radio control, then the playlists are useful to have a look at. Anything that's called Introduction To is an organised set of videos that teach you from first principles about the subject that you're interested in. But we also have information about the majority of popular open source flight controllers, how to build quadcopters, fixed wing models, reviews, setups, unboxing, all kinds of things in here as well. So if you haven't already had a look at the playlist, then I'd recommend going have a look through here to see if there's anything that takes you fancy. Finally, we do also provide updates through things like Twitter, Instagram, and also post all of our 3D designs on Thingiverse as well. So if you like what we're doing here on YouTube, have a look at those things and subscribe to us there and you'll find out what we're up to in advance of the videos coming out here on the channel.